Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Today we're going to move on to chapter 6 and cover a new topic. And the topic we're going to cover today is longitudinal modes of a laser. Um, and we've talked a lot about Gaussian beams for the transverse modes of a laser, and we'll clarify the, the descriptions and the words a little bit later. But let's just see what we've done already. We've talked about how Gaussian beams are formed in a cavity in Chapter 5. We've talked about how Gaussian beam propagates before that in Chapter 3. We've also looked at cavity stability conditions and know how to uh, create a stable cavity and how stable it is as you start to mess with and move and tilt the mirrors. Um, today we're going to look at an interesting property of cavities that falls out of a very simple wave treatment. and. Um, if you remember before in Chapter 5 when we talked about beam formation, uh, we said that if the spacing between the mirrors or if the modes of the cavity are such that the round trip is not an integer number of wavelengths, i.e. you see the situation shown here where all the waves peaks add up at different points, that you have a very much reduced intensity when you sum up all of these because they sum up as the square root of n as opposed to the configuration shown right here where you have an integer number of round trips, uh, all the waves sum up in phase essentially, and they all add up and the total intensity is proportional to n, the number of waves you uh, add up. And this, this is actually very visual. You can imagine this wave bouncing back and forth and getting established inside the cavity uh, in a resonant condition such that the, the amplitudes keep adding. And in fact, we've got a, let me get out of my inking here if I can figure out how to do it. In fact, I've got a, a web page I'm going to call up right here that illustrates that, and this is linked in your assignment. And essentially what we have is, is the wave propagates across the cavity and starts to bounce back and forth. Um, and let's scroll the page down a little bit. There we go. Um, it's not adding up very much because the wave's not really in phase. And you can see that, in fact, uh, the ratio right here is 3.78. There's not an integer or half an integer number of wavelengths. But as I start to change this wavelength, watch what happens. I'm going to move it over to, say, 3.6 or 3.5. And now the wave's much bigger. It's adding up in phase, even though it's not exactly 3.5. If I move it back a little bit, say, to 3.6, it's small. But as I and you'll see what happens as I start to go through these integer number of wavelengths. You start to reach a point, so let's try to get 3.0 here, where the wave gets very big, the amplitude decreases, it gets very big, and so on and so forth. Let's see if I can get it there. 4.5. And now we have the resonant condition. The waves are adding up as they bounce back and forth in the cavity. And I urge you to go back and try and play with this yourself. Um, what does that mean as far as a laser goes? Essentially what it means is if you look at the scale of frequency or energy, um, you'll in fact find that as far as the wavelength of the frequency of the cavity goes, there are certain frequencies that are allowed and certain frequencies that are not allowed, that will not come out of a laser. And today we're going to look at what the frequencies that, that we create are. And this is actually, the math of this is actually quite simple. And these types of frequencies that are allowed inside a cavity are called longitudinal modes. And that's in Chapter 6, along with a lot of other material we'll cover in the next 